But as I'm holding down that power button, waiting for that iPhone 7 to boot up, I see nothing. And I am starting to sweat bullets. What is going on, everyone? So today I'm going to bring you guys a kind of more different video than what I normally make. I'm going to be bringing you guys my experience from running a cell phone repair business as kind of like a side hustle. This is something I did back in 2022 last year, and I did see some success, but I also saw like a lot of failure. And I'm going to kind of break down what that business was and kind of give you guys some insight if you guys want to try it yourselves and then kind of give you guys the lessons that I've learned throughout and hopefully you guys don't repeat the same mistakes that I did. So to start off with, we're gonna start from the very, very beginning. Why did I get into cell phone repairs? If you guys have been around for a little while and you've seen some of my content on my channel, I'm really passionate when it comes to electronics repairs and I'm also really passionate when it comes to like the business aspect as well. I really find it really rewarding just like to take an iPhone, you know, to fix it up and then relist it to make some profit. And I think that's really fun. My thought was that why not have people bring their iPhones to me and then I fix them right then and there and then they have a working iPhone. I'd probably be able to make like you know 50 to 100 bucks off of each repair and everything would be pretty good. This does sound really good on paper and that's kind of where I was back last year around this time as well. So I had this like vision of just having my own business you know every week maybe do like two or three repairs make like 50 bucks to 100 bucks every repair you know maybe I could scale that up you know <laughs> scale that up be able to generate you know a few hundred bucks every week and I thought that was really well but that's where I kind of started to get more comfortable with fixing iPhones before I wanted to like work on customers iPhones I needed to get good at fixing iPhones like doing screen and battery repairs I started by going on to eBay and then I found a bunch of iPhone SEs for you know right around a hundred bucks or so and then I would buy like a screen off of Amazon or off of eBay and then I just try to replace the screen so I take this cracked up iPhone I would put a new screen on it and then I try to relist it back on Facebook marketplace or back on eBay so this went really well for the first few repairs you know I wasn't like huge profits or anything I would be able to make like 10 20 bucks off of an iPhone which is pretty good I <laughs> I thought initially but I I really knew that like making 10 20 bucks off of an iPhone going through that much effort was not going to be like sustainable so that's how, kind of why I really really wanted to get into well get into quickly running a, like a small side hustle business or running a small repair business after that you know doing those two or three iPhone SEs I went up to try to do some you know iPhone 11s and that was great and all yeah once again made like 20 30 bucks off of an iPhone here and there so I had this vision of a business model I wanted to advertise my business on a college campus so I decided to kind of market my business towards college kids. I wanted to be able to be someone that they uh, that if they didn't want to leave campus or like travel far away, they could come to me and in under an hour they'd be able to get their phone fixed. And what I basically did was I made I wanted to market my bit self as that person to go to, you know. I wanted to offer cheap repairs, fast repairs, and convenience, you know. All three of those hits. And I made flyers, you know. I put the flyers up in the library, put the flyers up at the dining hall, put the flyers all over campus, you know. Every weekend I was going, I was probably putting up like 20 to 50 flyers all around the place. And that went really well. Uh, in about two weeks or about a week, I was reliably able to get two or three customers to approach me and ask about my services, which is really nice. So going into my first week of operating my business, there was going to be a lot of like startup costs. For once, uh, I had to design a poster, so that was free, but I still needed to like print out a bunch. So that could probably cost like 20 bucks right there. I wanted to like be kind of professional in a way as well. So I printed out like a lot of business cards that cost 40 bucks. I hosted a website because yeah, once again, I kind of wanted like a clean image or like a pristine image. So that cost another, you know, like 40 bucks. So the cost like kept on adding and adding. I needed like special, not really like special tools, but I needed like some tools to like do the repairs as well because my like average tools weren't going to cut it. So I bought invested in like a better repair set. And I vested in like a heat pad as well because I was going to be working out at the library. So I didn't want to make that much noise towards the people that are around me. So I had to like find a quiet way to like open up iPhones. So that's why I kind of bought a heat pad. And I, also I wanted like some parts on 
the sidelines as well, just in case that, uh, you know, I, I thought, like, people would buy, like, who would want to repair their, like, iPhone 11 with me or their iPhone 12. So I had, like, a few, like, parts on hand. I probably had, like, $400 in parts on hand. So all in my cost was probably, like, close to, like, I want to say 600 maybe even, like, $1,000. That's how much money that I started with my initial investment <laughs> into this business. So that is quite a bit of money, especially for, like, a college kid, you know. Uh, that is like a big chunk of money for me. So my first week of running of posting flyers and maybe like starting a Facebook page as well I was able to get you know around two or three leads and this was really really promising uh, One of the leads led to my first repair. So to get into my first repair. It was an iPhone 13 Pro so at that point the 13 Pro was like the newest phone <laughs> and I did not I have never like touched an iPhone 13 the newest well the most modern phone I touched at that point was an iPhone 11 so going into the repair I was kind of nervous like the thoughts behind my head were like if I screwed up this phone uh, what would really happen to me uh, <laughs> would I have to like buy this person a new phone but uh, then again I was like okay at this point I have worked on many many phones I probably refixed like five or six iPhones at this point I feel pretty confident in my ability to do this repair successfully so that's what I did so I met up with the customer in the library uh, I brought I bought I purchased a brand new screen for iPhone 13 Pro which in which at that point that screen cost 300 bucks as well because it was like a brand new phone but luckily I was able to surcharge that phone as an LCD buyback uh, which is uh, a big, very big part, which helped me like stay profitable for the few first few months. So I'm gonna get into that a little bit later on. But yeah, I was able to go into that repair, fix up that iPhone, and everything seemed pretty good. I had a happy customer, and uh, I made my first like hundred bucks that weekend, which was really nice. I think I char yeah, I charged around like four hundred bucks because the screen had to cost like three hundred. <laughs> that weekend, I made a hundred bucks off of my very first repair, which was really, really promising. It really gave me like a lot of motivation to keep on continuing afterwards. I kept on doing these repairs over and over again and One thing I was doing was I was holding on to the broken iPhone screens So this is something that I really really recommend if you guys are starting up an iPhone repair business Or you're doing this as a hobby kind of like what I am right now always hold on to your broken iPhone screens Why do you want to do this it is because of LCD buyback programs? I've made a uh, video on my channel about LCD buyback programs in the past So if you really want to know more information I, I suggest you check out that video and this really really helped me in my first few months of running the business because you know uh, I was able to take some money from the LCD buyback programs rebuy some new parts using that store credit to for, for future repairs and that really helped uh, absorb the cost of the future repairs so every weekend I was probably doing like two repairs and I was able to consistently make like a hundred bucks you know maybe a hundred and fifty bucks every weekend which is very very nice at work and this is like as a college kid you know it, it the ability to like earn a hundred bucks here and there well, every week is like really really big money because that's like a part-time job you know and it's doing something I really like and I'm not really I don't really need to sink that much time into this business so that's why I really enjoyed it but after a few repairs I encountered my first major roadblock which was and how <laughs> I don't think I'll ever like forget this moment in my life because it really defined or how I think of running a business going forward and it really taught me a lot of lessons but it was very scarring in the moment so I got called up to fix an iPhone 7 plus an iPhone 7 plus is a very very old phone so without a doubt I was like okay so this phone I should probably be able to fix it up no problem because I mean at that point I fixed so many phones at this point that I'm like okay this is gonna be a walk in the park very very easy but one thing I did not anticipate was me bricking the phone. As I got into the repair and I fixed the phone, one mixed mistake that I did was that um, while cleaning out the inside of the phone, like I usually do, instead of using isopropyl alcohol, I use Goo Gone, which is like, ah, looking back at it, it was such a bad mistake, you know. Uh, but at the moment, I was like, I need something to clean clean the inside, and I use Goo Gone, which is like, I, I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> like, in the moment, I thought it was a good idea because I didn't have isopropyl, but I use Goo Gone to kind of clean the outside. Because the gasket, 
the waterproof gasket needs to adhere to something so I needed to clean out the space well clean out the phone so that's why I use Goo Gone so as I dabbed up the Goo Gone I think some of it got into the motherboard or some of the pins and it probably really screwed up the board as one good feature about isopropyl alcohol is that it evaporates very very quickly Goo Gone probably like stays there for like I don't even know like probably overnight <laughs> so as I am putting the screen back together and I'm trying to boot the phone back on I noticed that, like, this is, like, my worst fear, and I still get this anxiety every time I fix an iPhone, which is the first time you boot up that phone after the repair. It is absolutely heart-wrenching waiting for those three seconds for that iPhone. It feels like an eternity. But as I'm holding down that power button, waiting for that iPhone 7 to boot up, I see nothing, and I am starting to sweat bullets. A repair that should have took 30 minutes, like, I started to panic, and I just try to do everything. Yeah, I try to hit up with the air canisters of, uh, you know, the, the air canisters that you clean out your keyboard with, and I tried, like, everything, blowing on it, you know, and trying to clean it up, trying to add some heat to it, and just nothing would work. I, that phone was just completely bricked. Obviously, that really, really sucks. I am lucky that that phone was an iPhone 7 Plus and it was like an older model. Uh, so what I had to do was I had to pay the guy <laughs> the value of the phone. So I was out of pocket 200 bucks that weekend, which really, really hit, which really, really made me feel... I don't know, really bummed out, I guess, is the, is the best way to put it. I was completely devastated with running my business, and this is something that you have to account with when you're running a business, you know, because you're going to make mistakes. And what you have to do is be able to handle the mistakes in the moment and try to move past it and learn from those mistakes. So at that moment, I probably yeah I, I sat there for like an hour hour and a half trying to fix the phone and eventually i just told the guy i there's nothing much i can do i'm really sorry about messing up your phone and i tried to own up to my mistake and i yeah i paid the guy with the value of the phone and obviously he seemed pretty mad and i was pretty mad at myself for messing it up as well but there was nothing much i can do you know this was a mistake an honest mistake that i made with the goo gone and for, and i'm never gonna make this mistake ever again always use isopropyl alcohol when it comes to cleaning electronics and that is the end put of it i'm never going to use anything other than isopropyl alcohol going forward to clean electronics that is kind of where we're at today I was completely devastated, I learned my lesson, and I was kind of like put under pressure as well. If you ever start a business, th these are moments that are really going to define you, you know. Being put under pressure is where you kind of grow, I feel. I was forced to really come to terms with taking a loss at that point, and I kind of like grew in my mindset as well of um, everything's not going to do go well and you're gonna have to account for any disasters and it's best if you account for it when you hit these roadblocks as opposed to when you encounter these roadblocks in the moment to try to fix them so that's kind of where what I did I tried to be quick on my toes and I tried to resolve the issue as best I could obviously this was pretty stressful going down but I think that that's the best course of action that I did so after that repair I kind of was like turned off by iPhone repairs you know it was taking up at that point it was probably taking up two to three hours maybe even more sometimes maybe you, you would even go to five or six hours of my time every week because there's sometimes you need to contact a client and they would not get back to you or you'd like ping pong back and forth and then they kind of ghost you as well so that was taking up a lot of energy to do trying to arrange uh, appointments as well that was taking a lot of energy and i was really put off by that interaction with that iphone 7 plus and for that reason, I kind of shut down the business at that point. Looking back at it, I probably like thinking about my initial six hundred to a thousand dollar investment and taking that two hundred dollar loss. I probably made zero money off of that business. I probably did not. I probably lost money on that business. But it was a really, really good picture or like preview for me when it comes to running a business. And I'm, I'm able to apply it today, you know. Uh, hopefully, I am. What I'm focusing right now is doing what I initially did, you know, buying iPhones, 
fixing fixing them up and reselling them that's kind of where i'm at today i'm not messing with clients phones or client data as well because if i do brick a phone they, they lose their data which i kind of felt bad with with that iphone 7 plus as well for that reason for the time being i am focusing on just refurbishing phones when i was uh working up with clients that i really enjoy i absolutely say i really did i was able to meet up with a client uh for an hour you know have like a little chit chat back and forth as well it was really cool meeting like a complete stranger <laughs> sometimes and like uh and then sparking a conversation fixing their phone on the spot and then it was really nice to help people as well you know they would say the things to me like oh if, if your service wasn't here i'd have to like drive an hour away to try to get my phone fixed or like this iphone repair shop quoted me 300 dollars to fix this iphone and you were able to do it in a t 150 bucks or something like that and that was always really rewarding and i really enjoyed that human aspect of interacting with other people but i think for what it was uh, operating a business by myself, <laughs> it was pretty stressful, I feel. I guess this is the kind of the end advice for you guys. If you guys are really interested in starting an iPhone business, I'd say do your research and try to become proficient at f f fixing iPhones. Once you become really good at fixing iPhones, I say try to, you know, maybe go to like some family members and try to fix their iPhones to try to handle the stress of fixing someone else's iPhone and trying to be confident with that. Once you feel that you can pretty confidently fix iPhones for people, I'd say then you can start running your business. And then always keep in the back of your mind, what happens if I brick an iPhone? What are some bad things that can happen? Can I rip a cable? Can I do this? Can I do that? And you gotta account for that. You either have to become, get the skills to not do these things in the first place you have to learn from other people's mistakes like my mistake for instance with the Gugon and you have to just really hone your skills and keep on working at it and I say after that you can try to scale this business up into a more successful business you know generating like a few hundred dollars or maybe even a thousand dollars every month which would be kind of cool turning this side business or side hustle into an actual business so that is kind of where I'm at right now I'm <laughs> I kind of want to do get back into fixing people's phones but I don't think I'm gonna be doing it anytime soon maybe one day I'll get back into it and I'll like fully document that process again but yeah this is kind of where I'm at I'm kind of <laughs> yeah just refurbishing phones for the time being and that's kind of what I enjoy doing as well but yeah I do kind of miss that human interaction with trying to like meet up with people and trying to make their day by trying to fix their phone for an affordable price if you guys have any questions about running an iPhone repair business and you guys kind of want to pick my brain a little bit more, uh, I'll be replying to comments in the comment section. Or if you guys want to see more content about making money through electronics, I have a whole series about that on YouTube and you guys can watch me trying to refurbish electronics for profit. With that said, guys, I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I hope you guys <laughs> see success with your side hustles.